This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, joined by Democracy Now!'s Juan Gonzalez in Chicago. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Well, we begin today's show in Afghanistan, where the Taliban government issued an order over the weekend that women can no longer work for non-governmental organizations. This includes relief agencies. Groups that employ women could lose their license to operate in the country. Five top non-governmental organizations have now halted work in Afghanistan as a result. CARE International, the Norwegian Refugee Council, Save the Children, the International Rest Committee, and Islamic Relief. In a joint statement from CARE, the NRC, and Save the Children, the groups noted they, quote, would not have jointly reached millions of Afghans in need since August 2021 without their female staff. A Taliban spokesperson accused female workers at the aid groups of breaking dress codes by not wearing hijabs. The Taliban's new edict came just days after it banned women from attending university, prompting a protest Wednesday in Kabul. Taliban forces arrested five protesters, three journalists, and some of the women said they were beaten by security forces. Guards also prevented hundreds of women from entering during their colleges a day after the ban was announced. This is Mariam, a student at Kabul University who was turned away from her campus. When I got close to the university, I saw a strange environment. Taliban Humvees were parked at the entrance gate, and the Taliban were behaving so badly, telling us, return to your homes. Girls have no right to study anymore. This situation has a very bad impact on every female student. This comes after the Taliban barred Afghan girls from attending secondary school earlier this year. For more, we're joined by two guests. Jamila Afghani is an Afghan educator, women's rights activist, who leads the Afghanistan section of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. She's the founder of the Noor Educational and Capacity Development Organization and created the first gender-sensitive training in Afghanistan for imams. She's joining us from Kitchener, Canada. Uh, she's lived there since she was evacuated from Kabul um, last August, after spending time in Norway. And in Oslo, Norway, we're joined by Jan Eglund, secretary general of the Norwegian Refugee Council, one of the groups that's now pulled out of the country. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! We're going to begin with Jamil Afghani. If you can respond to the series of edicts, and then we'll go to Norway, where you were evacuated to from Afghanistan more than a year ago, um, to talk with Jan Eglund, whose group is now halting work there because of this latest edict. But first, Jamila, your response. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much for having me uh, in your program. Uh, unfortunately, the ban uh, on women education and uh, later on the ban on women uh, from uh, employment and national and international NGOs, which were the main source of hate support for Afghan women and children and this peak uh, situation of humanitarian crisis and very cold winter. Uh, this was an act against human uh, humanity, and it was uh, very shocking news for all Afghan and for especially for those women who are breadwinner of their family. So the situation inside Afghanistan is very chaotic on a daily basis. I'm in contact with my colleagues, with my network around the country, and everybody is disappointed from this action of Taliban. The Taliban who promised to be changed to allow women uh, for their education, for their employment, uh, but unfortunately, they are not keeping their promise with the international community, with people of Afghanistan. And could you talk about the what's been the situation with women attending a higher education or the university since the Taliban took over? And what, uh, from what you can tell, prompted this action now? Actually, Taliban, from the very beginning, banned girls from going to school from grade 6 up to grade 12. And in the past one year, we were engaged in multi-layer of advocacy for reopening of the school. Uh, 
And unfortunately, nothing worked, nothing worked. And we were expecting that Taliban may uh, ban girls from the higher education and rest of uh, education area. But with the latest announcement, uh, Taliban has banned women, girls from all level of education, even from religious educational uh, centers with women and girls are born. And the reason Taliban are giving that is about hijab or uh, not observing hijab, which is totally wrong justification. Uh, none of Afghan women, even before the Taliban, uh, such a decree uh, was uh, was uh, not without hijab. Everybody was wearing their hijab, but the special black dress code that Taliban is taking, uh, most of the girls are doing that. Um, and the special dress code which Taliban is dictating on women of Afghanistan, it has no space in Islamic teaching. There is no space in Islamic history about that. Islam has given a proper justification or dress code about women and the limits and everything is clear cut in Quran mentioned. There is nothing that Taliban is claiming. And even this claim of Taliban is an act of criminal, uh, putting wrong blame or bad blame on the women of Afghanistan that they are demoral or they are engaged in demorality. And I'm ashamed of having such an Afghan person talking about these things in this way in front of international community. And this is not uh, the word of an Afghan person. Well, you participated in the Doha talks with the Taliban back in 2019, you, uh, and you directly questioned them about their position, would, what their position would be on women accessing education and being able to work. What did they tell you then? And uh, has anybody responded to why they've changed uh, their policy so dramatically? Yeah, uh, during my visit in Qatar in 2019, we directly raised the question, and they totally uh, were very uh, open with the current uh, dress code of Afghan women, and they were very open about the education of women, and they were saying that this is an Islamic right, this is the Sharia right, so nobody can take away the Sharia right. But the current uh, acting minister of um, virtue, uh, minister of uh, virtue, and the other minister, acting minister of higher education, it seems that they have no knowledge of Islam. They haven't uh, studied Islam. They have been ignorant about the Islamic teachings that they don't know what is Sharia, what is the rights of women in Sharia of Islam. Uh, the only thing that I can see this stubbornness that is part of their uh, tribalism, that they are, uh, this is the part, um, type of uh, patriarchal mindset that they have, there is nothing with Islam. And people of Afghanistan, alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. We understand what are the limitations in Sharia. And most of us, we are observing. And this person who is very ignorant uh, and Taliban leadership must remove these people from the system as soon as possible. They are bridging, uh, they are uh, breaking the bridge between nation and the acting uh, current government who has not recognition on the international level. And now they are not forcing people to, to believe them or to be part of them with this type of mindset. No one will stand beside them. Jamila Afghani, if you can respond to the Taliban trying to frame this as the West versus them, uh, and Western organizations like uh, Jan Eglin's Norwegian Refugee Council, who we're going to go to in a minute, um, trying to tell Afghanistan what to do, trying to frame it as the West versus Afghanistan, rather than Afghanistan versus the women. Your response? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Afghan women are part of human humanity. Afghan women are not a special creature from somewhere else. We are part of humanity, and Afghan women are making half 
half body of the nation of Afghanistan. How, how Taliban or any government can ignore that? And currently, the aid organization, including uh, the local organization, they were acting to provide humanitarian assistance for women and children of Afghanistan. This is what international community should do, and they should be engaged. Although the sanction in Afghanistan on economic situation in Afghanistan, but still these organizations were working with so much difficulty. But now Taliban banned them to work. This is a, a criminal act uh, that Taliban are doing. This is not responsibility of West. This is the responsibility of Taliban as an acting government to look after the people of Afghanistan. If they are putting this much pressure on people of Afghanistan, on whom they are going to, 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 to have their kingdom, to have their uh, rulership. I want to bring Jan Eglund into this conversation, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, speaking to us from Oslo. Jan, um, a U.N. official told the BBC that the United Nations could stop humanitarian aid delivery in Afghanistan if the, pa if the Taliban don't reverse their edict banning women aid workers. Now, you, the Norwegian Refugee Council, has already decided to halt your work there as a result of this latest Taliban edict. Can you talk about what went into your decision, who are the women who work for you, and what this could mean? Well, it came out of the blue, really, on Christmas Eve, 24th of December, um, and it was a circular from the Minister of Economy that sits on our permits to operate, and it went to all of, uh, virtually all of the non-governmental organizations, Afghan and international, and they said that females cannot anymore work. We uh, are totally dependent on our committed, hardworking, professional female workforce. They are colleagues that we have promoted to management positions. They are essential to our work. So that's why we didn't pull, pull out, as some, some phrase it. We're still there. We, we did not go with the, with the West uh, that left um, a, a year ago. We have been there ever since. Uh, and we have been in Taliban-controlled territory and other territory for decades. Um, the, the reason we did halt work are twofold. Number one, we cannot operate without our, our female staff. It would be inferior uh, operations. Uh, males cannot directly give uh, aid to uh, women. Women and children are the people that are those who are in greatest need. The second reason is really that we would disintegrate as a principled and good employer. We have a global program, and I've said to the Taliban many times in Kabul, and even when they came to Norway, that we respect the traditional Afghan values, and we live by them when they, we are in their country. But we have values, too. We cannot compromise on this, the equality of males and females to work together in a common cause. And Jan Eglin, uh, the claim of the Taliban that the international, the, those uh, Afghan women who work for international aid organizations have not been wearing the hijab, had they raised this at all previously as a concern of theirs, or did this just come, as, as you mentioned, out of the blue? No, it came out of the blue. I mean, they've been... They came banging on our door when they took over in the places where they took over. They told us that they would strictly enforce the uh, Islamic uh, standards, the traditional values. And since then, we have uh, our female colleagues have used the hijab. We have separated males and females in the workplace, and we even have male relative guardians traveling with our female colleagues on longer travel. All of this is in accordance with what they instructed. Uh, actually, it's true, as, as, as the previous speaker said, m much of this we did during the previous uh, government as well. I, maybe they have one or two examples of, 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 of an office where the hijab was not in place when they came. So give a warning to that, uh, that group to paralyzed work for millions of people in the midst of the winter, 
is really a gut blow to the population, to the people of Afghanistan. We cannot compromise on this. We cannot work with that ban. And, and, how, and what do you, what do you ahead, perceive Max. to be the impact of the continuing impact of the Western sanctions uh, in Afghanistan? Uh, obviously, the the inability of some of the international organizations that are there to function will only make things worse. But what is the what is right now the impact of those sanctions? Well, the sanctions are still a problem in the sense that there is still a lot of money sitting in Washington, for example, that was meant for the Afghan people, money belonging to the Afghan Central Bank. Development money was withdrawn. Uh, this was a place where, where the West spent hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars to, to provide for the 40 million civilians. And when they left, they closed many of these uh, these development streams and Western banks were so afraid of the sanctions, especially the American sanctions, that they stopped financial transfers. We do have now the permits to do our work. The uh, Biden administration has a humanitarian carve out, which is pretty good, but we, we still struggle with having Western companies work with us. However, Today, a, a problem is squarely the Taliban hardliners that were able to enforce extremist um, lines of late out of Kandahar and, where they, and elsewhere where they are now sitting. So it's a, it's, a, it's a struggle of values, really, also within the Taliban. And we need to win that. And I'm glad that the UN seems now to take the lead in working for a reversal of this ban. Um, I wanted to ask Jamil Afghani um, about whether you support these groups pulling out at this point and what you think the chances are of the Taliban reversing themselves on this. It's also just so interesting that we have you on, Jamila, um, with Jan Egland, because you appealed to the Norwegian authorities as the U.S. was pulling out um, to evacuate you. You were very challenged as a child. You suffered from polio. Um, physically challenged, then you were shot in the head during the Soviet occupation. You had to get yourself and your children out, and it was Norway that helped you get out to, Nor to Norway? Yeah, uh, I'm really thankful, uh, as an Afghan woman, as a, an individual, on behalf of all my sisters and people of Afghanistan, for uh, these uh, organizations like Norwegian uh, Care, uh, IRC, and some other organization that they have been beside women of uh, women of Afghanistan and people of Afghanistan for decades by providing multi-layer activity and support for the people of Afghanistan. Even during the former government, when fighting was going on in many provinces, they were present there and they were supporting people of Afghanistan. And their holdback means uh, a lot for us in terms of uh, that they are uh, in solidarity with us, with women of Afghanistan, with people of Afghanistan, and they are really understanding what is the situation on the ground. And the way we are disappointed from the uh, Taliban authorities, especially from the hardliner authorities, um, that they are not belong to Afghanistan, they do not understand people of Afghanistan, they do not have the knowledge of what's going on the situation on humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Uh, as I was individually uh, in a very uh, hard moment that everybody left Afghanistan. Everybody left Afghanistan, U.S., NATO, everybody. But still, I was supported and evacuated, and I spent one year in Norway with the very good uh, intention and support I was there. But due to climate and some other reasons, <clears throat> I was shifted here in Canada. Uh, so, uh, if uh, these international organizations are not working with people of Afghanistan, there will be a dilemma, a dilemma 
that humanitarian might not have such a such an example of it. Taliban are ignorant. They are not understanding what's going on because the U.S. is injecting 40, uh, 40 million dollars cash money in Afghanistan, and a good sum of these money are going to their pocket. They have good life. They, they are marrying for the second time, for the third time, for the fourth time, and they do not understand what people of Afghanistan are suffering. So, and Jamila Afghani, I wanted to ask you, what has been the response of the masses of Afghani men uh, to these latest uh, acts of the Taliban, especially young uh, young men in Afghanistan? Uh, what have uh, have they risen up in protest at all, or expressed solidarity with uh, the women who are being uh, put under this almost fascistic rule? Yes, um, Afghan men also stand in solidarity with Afghan women. And some of the university boys rejected to, to go for the uh, final exam because the announcement of Taliban came right on the last paper, on the last day of the final examination. Some of the boys, some of the students uh, walk out from the examination, and some of them joined the protest, but Taliban was very harsh, very brutal with them, especially in Kandahar and some other provinces. As men are more exposed to the beating, killing, uh, torture of Taliban, that's why the situation is very hard. And you can see that even the journalists are not also protected from, uh, from any kind of coverage of the scenario. But uh, yesterday and day before yesterday in Kabul and Hedhat and some other provinces, men and women stand on the top of their roof and they were shouting for the right of women. And the darkness uh, in, from the fear of execution, from the fear of beating and killing. So this is the situation. The situation is uh, very bad. And even we heard a lot of uh, good support from ulema of Afghanistan from prominent scholars of Afghanistan about the support of women's uh, participation in education and empowerment and their employment, they stood beside us and they uh, invited Taliban for a religious dialogue. I'm also inviting Taliban for a religious dialogue. If it is Sharia, we need to know what type of Sharia they are, uh, they are understanding. We, the, the Islam we know and the world is practicing is totally different from the interpretation of Taliban. We are inviting them to sit in, on the table and discuss about the Sharia. We will bring men and women ulama to discuss with them to find out what is the reason. With this type of ignorance, with this type of um, ban on the women of Afghanistan, that is, that is totally innocent. My question from the Taliban are, they are uh, in this world because of a mother. This is their attitude with their own mothers and with their own sisters. They are putting bling on the women of Afghanistan that they are not uh, moral. Uh, they are doing some act of demorality. This is such a big shame. You're putting this name on the name of all women of Afghanistan. This is such a big shame. All men and women of Afghanistan are dignified people. They are Muslim before Taliban. They are Muslim now, and they will remain Muslim after Taliban. They should understand what they are saying. And this is too much for us to accept it. We want to thank you, Jamila Afghani, for joining us, Afghan educator and feminist who leads the Afghanistan section of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, founder of the Noor Educational and Capacity Development Organization. And finally, Jan Eglin, we just have 30 seconds, but is it your sense that there is a division within the Afghan leadership that this could turn around? Uh, yes. Uh, it's very clear that uh, this is uh, hardliners who wanted this. They have the upper hand now. We can reverse it. We must reverse it. And by the way, we're not pulling out. We're there. We can start to resume our work for millions of people in need tomorrow. 
but then we need to do it with our female colleagues. And there are how many Afghan colleagues at your organization, Norwegian Refugee Council, out of how many? Well, one-third of our staff, 500 nearly, of our 14, 1,500 uh, aid workers are female, and, and they are highly professional, highly committed, working very hard. They are very often the breadwinner of their family. We need them to be able to communicate with and work for the Afghan people. Jan Eglin, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, speaking to us from Oslo, Norway.